Hi folks, Steve Nixon here at Logic FX Trading and welcome to this last video in our Building Block series where we're learning Elliott Wave Theory as a prelude to the Competent Trader Training and Mentoring programs. You'll need to know this basic knowledge of Elliott's rules and guidelines before taking on more advanced training or mentoring. It wouldn't be wise to subscribe to the Competent Trader unless you know the content of this free course. You'd simply be wasting your time and money. Now, as I said earlier, the Building Block series is only meant to assist you in understanding what is written in Elliot's Way of Principle by Frost and Pretcher. We'll finish the series with this video by using what we've learned up to now to do a step one analysis, which is a broad top down analysis that you'll need to do for every instrument you intend to trade. You really shouldn't risk your capital by trying to trade anything that you don't know inside out. The charts are continually changing, so your analysis needs to be dynamic to keep up with developments. Trading is easy when price does what you forecast, but it will often not follow your thinking and you'll have to continually reassess the situation. That's when a really good personal trading strategy can save the day by either limiting your loss or protecting whatever gains you've already made. Becoming a competent, successful trader is a process of learning knowledge, applying it, and assessing the results. Reapply what works and change what doesn't work. Remember, we learn through repetition of doing the right things, and that's where a mentor or a mastermind trading group can help us focus your time and energy by showing you the decision process over and over again. But no matter how you gain your knowledge and experience, you'll find that it will save you from losing money just as often as it will help you to make money. To use a sporting analogy, there's no point scoring three times if you concede four times, and a championship team is built on a solid defence. So your initial psychological approach to trading should be to protect your capital as much as possible, and with growing experience and success, you can increase your exposure to risk. OK, let's get on with our step one analysis of the Aussie Kiwi price chart. As the name suggests, this is an initial general overview of the chart to gain some knowledge and understanding of its personality. Once we've developed our initial ideas of what's happening, we need to take a closer look at it and backtest any trading strategies we intend to use. As the chart develops over time, watch its progress continually, analysing and forecasting as you go along. You should only risk your capital once you feel your forecasting and trading strategy can produce acceptable results. Now, if you want to feel the excitement of trading with real money, then do with a small amount of money that will not affect your overall capital situation should you lose it. You can still get excited by percentage gain rather than meaningful amount of money. OK, guys, so for our step one analysis, we're going to look at the Aussie New Zealand dollar pair. And as we mentioned in the introduction of the competent trader, the big picture, we always need to start by having a historical view of what's happened to the pair before we've got to where we are today. Because there isn't any point in looking at a chart on a 15 minute time basis and considering that you actually know what's going on. You have to know what's happened in the past to give yourself an idea of how the wave or how the pair move. So get an idea of of where it's been and what's happening, we need to have a look at our historic data just as we did in the big picture. So here we have the Aussie New Zealand monthly. If we zoom in on this, we can see from this chart that 2002 is where our information starts. Previous to that, we had a peak at 2000. We had a trough in 1995 and another peak in 1992 and a trough in 1988. So if we just plot those on our graph here, and we'll get an idea. It kind of went something like that, back down to the bottom, up again, back down to the bottom, and actually fact that was a little, little bit further up. So that's our historic data. And prior to that, we had a huge peak away up here at um, one point Oh, that's really good. Approximately 1.8 and our low is around between 1 and 
down here. We've actually got down to parity there. Okay, so that's our historic view. And what we saw in there was that we kind of had an impulse coming down. This looks like a correction going up. An impulse coming down. And is it possible that we're going to look at something like that? The important thing is, is that obviously we don't know what's going to happen next. But given the historic movement that it seems to be ranging, the chances are that at some point we're going to get a move up like that. We can use our bar patterns tool to have a look at what happened previously and project it forward. So the chances are that if this moves in the direction that we're thinking it will to give us something along those lines remembering that this has come down from that level. Remember, guys, it could go further up, it might come shorter. But the point is that historically it has ranged between our top there and our bottom down there. So what we're trying to do here is build up an image of the personality of this particular currency pair. How does it move? What has it done historically? We're trying to get an image in our head of what happens here. And we need to do this with every single instrument that we're going to trade. We need to know them inside out. How do they move? What's happening on the larger scale? And therefore it gives us an idea of what might happen next. If this chart looked completely different, well then we wouldn't be saying that there's a high probability that it's going to go up there. We might say there's a high probability that it's going to go lower. But by looking at the historic information, we can say with a reasonable degree that there's a high probability that the price is going to move up from where it is. Can it move down from where it is now and come back down to there? Certainly it can. Can it do that? Can, yes, certainly it can. Is that a high probability scenario? No, it isn't. It can come back down to there and touch again and it can go. It can bounce along here and then it can go. We don't know. But what we're doing is trying to create a picture in our heads of what's most likely to happen. And every time that over the last 20 years that it's moved up, it's moved up in a corrective manner like this. And when it's come down, it's been impulsive. So in all probability, if this moves up, it's going to move up something like this. Now once we've done this, we don't really need to do it again. Because when you're trading day in, day out, you know this historic data. You know the pair that you're trading. And you'll not need to do this over and over, over again. This is basically step one analysis. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's move down to the next time scale, which is on a weekly basis. And we'll focus more in on what's been going on over the last two to three years rather than the last 30 or 40 years. Now, let's bring our Fibonacci tool in just to learn a little bit more about how it moves. And we can measure that and look for our retracement. So it came up, our, our initial retracement was back in the 61.8% approximately. And then we had another move up and our next retracement was down into the gap between 78.6 and 88.6. So it's retraced quite deeply. So are we looking at a wave 1, 2 and then we're starting to get some sort of third wave coming up? We don't know but we're building up a picture. We're building up ideas of what possibly is going on here. So what we seem to be having is quite deep corrections and we can even see here, remember this is still weekly, we can even see here that each time we get an impulse we get a very deep correction, we get an impulse a very deep correction. So we're starting to build up a picture of how this pair moves. 
So let's go down to our daily chart and look at how it's been moving more recently. So <clears throat> if we take this portion, we can see that we've had an impulse and a correction that's come down to approximately 78.6%. Yet again, a deep correction. If we go to our next impulse, from there to there, we can see yet again that we've had another deep correction back down this time to 88.6%. So given that information, what's likely to happen here? Well, there's a high probability that this will move in a similar way. If we take our ghost bars, will it move back down in a similar fashion to that? So this is the sort of information that, that I had back here. So we can see here we've had an impulse and we're getting a correction coming down. seventy eight point six you can see why I posted a chart saying we're looking for a long here when we post it price had come down come down come down seventy eight point six fib retracement and it bounced and it bounced and it took off but you can see that it was a good trade it did take a long time to happen but you can see that it was well worth the effort. You can also see that I've said it will come up, it will break this line, correct, and then go further up. And what it did eventually was it came up, corrected, and broke up through the line. The correction came here rather than here. Our Elliott Wave theory is what tells us that this is how it moves. And that's how I knew that it was going to come up and turn and then break up again. It didn't quite reach our weekly trend line. But when you're looking on these scales, remember we don't trade at this level. This is just an idea of where we think it's going to go next. So it's come up and eventually I think it came right back down again and then it went again. Let's have a look. Yes, it did. It came right back down again. And then it did the same thing again. It went up and it came down again. It's trying to make a wave one. And you remember what we said about wave ones? They go up and 50% and completely retrace themselves. I thought this was wave one. It retraced itself. I thought this was wave one. It retraced itself. Now, remember something. We can still make a lot of money getting this right. And then we protect ourselves with our stop loss and even... You can trade that back down again. So the fact that this wasn't didn't turn into the big move up that I expected doesn't deter us, doesn't stop us from making money. And it also doesn't mean that you're wrong because eventually it did do what I was expecting. And here we have our wave one, two, three, four, five, which is an extended five. And then the process started again with a jagged correction coming back down. And what did we say that was? From there to there, it came back down to 88.6 Fib retracement level. In fact, it broke through it. It almost came right back down to 100. But remember, yet again, this is a daily chart and we'll not be trading on a daily chart basis. We'll be trading at the one hour and the 240 minute levels. So given how it's moved historically, we're now in a position to have a better idea of what's going on here, which is where we're looking for a trade. Essentially what we're trying to do here is determine what's going to happen next at this level here. Are we going to get a continuation down, deeper correction as we've had before? Or is it going to do something new and turn and go sharply up? My money's on it coming deeper. 
But that doesn't necessarily mean you have to trade it. You never trade something that you're not very, very certain of. That's how you lose your money. So let's have another look at this. It's come down to the 38.2% correction. Is it going to come deeper? Well, we know that there's a possibility that it could come right down to here. 88.6 and slightly beyond, which means that it would actually also come down and touch our trend line. So if this continues down, given the personality, given what's happened in the past, I would say there's a high probability that this will come back down and touch this trend line. If it doesn't do that, and it turns, well then we'd be looking for a breakout of this trend to push us up into these sort of levels here, and maybe even beyond. Those are our two scenarios. Either it comes down to here, or it turns and goes up to there. Of course, it could bounce along a little bit and then go up to there. There are positions in the chart that are easier to make a forecast from than others. Easy forecasts can be made in positions like this, where you're, we're at extremes. It's easy to see when it gets to there that there's a high probability that price is going to come down like this. It's easy to see, given the historical data, that when we get down to these sort of levels, the price is going to do that. It's difficult to tell what's going to happen next when we've had this. I would suggest that we're probably looking at some sort of move up before we get a further move down, because that's how this pair moves. What is this likely to look like? Rather than guess, let's go back over here and copy these candles. The last time we had a steep move down like this, we get a sharp move up, A, B, C, correction, and then we had another impulsive move down. Does that mean that that's exactly what we're going to get now? No, it doesn't. But there is a high probability that from this level, we're going to get some sort of retracement of this and it could go all the way back to these sort of levels or it could turn and come down to these sorts of levels but we don't have to know at the moment which of the two it's going to do what we need to have in our mind is is that the next big move from here in all probability is going to be long so you don't want to be looking for a short trade at this juncture that's the important information that you can glean from what we've done so far remembering that this is just step one of our analysis so let's now use our Elliott rules and guidelines to try and make some sort of sense of what's going on here now initially at this time scale, and given the direction of movement, it's quite deep and sharp. So likelihood is that we're looking for a zigzag. So let's have a look and see if we've got a zigzag here somewhere. If we take this as our wave one, a deep retracement for our wave two, Wave 3, an A, B, C here for wave 4, and a nice move down for wave 5. So what do we have? We have a 5 wave diagonal. And then we've got this corrective phase, which is potentially 1, 2, 3. Remember this is first step, guys. We don't need to get too fine a detail. So we've basically had A, B, and now we're looking to analyze this to see if this is another zigzag, which possibly it is. Something of the order of one, two, three, 
4 and now we're getting 5 which may extend down to there or maybe truncate it and finish there but essentially what we're saying is that we've got a double zigzag here which in all probability given the fact that it looks like we've got a 5 3 5 that this is going to end somewhere soon also given that our 38.2 fib retracement is around about here the chances are that we're going to either get a truncation or a slight move down there before we get some sort of movement up now whether that movement turns into an X wave or whether it turns into a B wave with this being our A wave here well we don't know but the important thing is we're not looking for a short trade at the moment is it possible that this makes a short move and then continues on down yes it is possible but it isn't probable and we've got to always go with what's probable rather than what's possible at some point we're going to get a correction of that move down we're going to get some sort of B wave which may bring it right back up to the top and it may just set up another double zigzag down given how it moves chances are we're going to get another zigzag down but we don't need to worry about that yet from a trading point of view what we're looking for is a break of our current trend which is probably something like that let's take that fed figure out there <clears throat> My best estimations are that this zigzag coming down has a trend that runs like that. And if we're looking to trade this up, I'm going to be waiting for a break of that line. I'm not going to say that's a 38% fib and therefore it must bounce off it because it doesn't have to. And that's where a lot of people go wrong. They think that the market's always respect fib lines the market respects nothing the market will do what the market's going to do regardless of whether we have a fib line a support line a resistance line or any sort of line drawn in the chart the market will do what it's going to do we draw the lines to give us an indication to build up evidence of what's going to happen next is it possible that it will bounce off the 32.8% fib? Yes, it is possible. Is it probable? No, it isn't probable. It's possible. Therefore, we don't try and trade it. So what I'm looking for next is to see if this is going to turn there or to see if it's going to go a little bit deeper, but at some point it will turn and then we'll look at what format that takes. If it's like that, in other words, if it comes up like that, well, we may well be looking at another move down. That's our clue. But if it moves something more like this, if it moves more like that, sharp, then we look for a correction keeping in mind that this may just be an A, B, C, B wave and may just be the prelude to another zigzag down. So we're building up a picture of what is possible and what is probable. Given this information, we then can make our decisions about whether we're going to trade it at all. It might not be worth trading at all guys but remember we've got countless numbers of pairs we've got countless numbers of shares indexes to look for the high probability trades so given that information what i'll be doing now is keeping an eye on this with this information either on a chart or in the back of my mind saying we're looking for a b wave up 
and once the B wave starts, we'll have it in the back of our minds to say, does this look like it's going to go right back up to the top to give us a flat? Or does this look like it's going to be a short B that doesn't reach the top and is therefore part of a larger double or triple zigzag back down to the levels that we know that this can retrace to. So that's our step one analysis. Now we analyse it on a daily basis as we move along. And we add the new information that we get each day to what we already know. It's not a case of doing this every time we come back to the chart. Okay folks, that's it for the building block series. I hope it's been useful for you and I wish you well in your continued development. I'll keep producing weekly forecast videos and charts which you can find by following me on Twitter, Facebook and TradingView or you can visit logicfxtrading.com for access to all my work including the Competent Trader training and mentoring programs. I'm Stephen Nixon. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.